Us NFT enthusiasts would want a decentralized version of everything on the blockchain. But truthfully, that is really not the most efficient way to do things. That technology, depending how it is, it could be very slow, it could be expensive, it could be inefficient, depending on the use case. But one great use case that we can all appreciate within the NFT community is data storage. And many times we speak about NFTs being decentralized as far as the image storage. But today we're going to dive into Filecoin and discuss this Web3 version of cloud storage. Hello, I'm Taj, digitally known as Tropic Vibes, the host of Nifty Business, where we highlight NFTs and explore Web 3.0 as we move from pure speculation to creating real-world value. So first of all, what is Filecoin? Simply put, it is a decentralized storage network. And the most common way most people probably heard about it is using the interplanetary file system, IPFS. And a lot of times that is how the NFT images are stored. And that launched in 2014. However, the Filecoin mainnet launched in 2020. But IPFS is free, sort of like a BitTorrent and Filecoin is like the Priceline or Airbnb for available storage. So the two actually work together. They're interchangeable. But the token that actually runs the economy is the Filecoin. And that's readily available on the exchange, just like Ether, Solana, Bitcoin, or any other cryptocurrency. And it allows the buyers to actually bid for storage for wherever this information is going to be stored. Because they're over the globe, countless servers and storage options, and not all of it is being utilized. So what this actually does, just like Priceline or Airbnb, is it allows people to bid on that available storage. And that's how the token actually comes into place. And those service providers that have the storage provide it to the network for a set price using that token. And the concept of this is to build a better and more decentralized web. So right now, a lot of times we're seeing the images for our NFTs stored on IPFS using this Filecoin system. However, you can put websites up, you can put videos, you can put music, you can really do it with multiple things. Any kind of file that you normally put on an AWS web server or Azure with Microsoft or any of the other cloud storage options, you can do with Filecoin and IPFS. But the way they route it and the way they actually link all this stuff together, I'm not going to go really deep into the technicals, just giving you a broad overview. So instead of serving up that exact file, what ends up happening is you're getting a hash, which just identifies the actual one. And whichever network computer that it's on, it will pull from the nearest one. And the most efficient way that it can serve up that file, that's how it does it. It is not just one centralized copy. It is redundant. And in many cases, there's over five versions of this on the blockchain. And at current, the network can store over 12,000 years of continuous live video. So if you condense all of that information and all that data, all that video streaming, that's how much the network can actually support. But guess what? As big as the number of that is, that is actually only 1% of the global storage capacity. So we're not talking about just Web3 storage or within Filecoin's network. We're talking about every AWS cloud, Google cloud, Azure, just you name it. That is only 1%. So as crazy as that number is, 12,000 years of live video, considering that that is only 1%, you can definitely see where there is a huge opportunity for decentralized storage because 99% of the data out there is stored on a central server. So the system that they set up within the network allows anyone with open storage to be able to pledge that it goes out for bid. They're paid for it in Filecoin, and that's what keeps everything going. And it is really complex as to the tokenomics of all this. And I'll be 100% honest, I spent hours and hours researching the coin and figuring out how the actual tokenomics and everything works. And I fully understand that, yes, the people that are providing the storage or the companies that are providing the storage are paid in Filecoin. But as far as the sustainability of everything, keeping it going, the actual nuts and bolts of the system, that is something that is still going to take a lot more research. And quite honestly, it might be over my head. But following this and seeing how it actually works, I understand how the services are provided, how everyone agrees to this, and how the files are served up and distributed across the network. It is pretty cool. And the fact that there are over 4,000 providers that have contributed their data space to it, it allows for those redundant copies, as I said, a minimum of five. But Besides NFTs and all the fun stuff that we're doing in Web3, we have universities, we have research facilities, we have labs, and even people doing genome data with DNA, they're storing their research and their findings using this system. So this is a huge opportunity going forward to store large amounts of data, distributing it and allowing it to 
have multiple copies so that it can't be taken down from the web. And the beautiful thing about this is there is no storage, there is no censorship. So let's just say one of those studies comes out with something that is a little bit controversial and people might want to suppress it. Well, if it's up on this network, it is not as just easy as deleting it from Facebook or something of that nature. So it is something that is worth looking into and why it is such a great option for NFTs and everything that we're doing in Web3. But Filecoin actually isn't the only one that is doing this. This is the most prominent one because IPFS sort of launched and got ahead of the whole NFT curve. And that is the name that we're most familiar with. Although it is not threatening the business model of, let's say, an Amazon Web Services at this moment, a decentralized storage system is a growing industry. And Filecoin is actually not the only one. We have Sia, Arweave, and Storage. Now, each of these do have a different way of serving these things up. They have their advantages and their disadvantages, but I'm not even going to go into all of that because it gets very technical. However, what I will do is I will leave links to each of these and I will put a YouTube video for Filecoin and IPFS, but I just want to point out that Manifold, the popular no-code option for launching Ethereum-based NFTs, they do not use IPFS and Filecoin. They use Arweave. So their explanation as to why they went with Arweave is on their website, but again, I'm not going to go into all of that, but I'm just letting you know there's different options out there, but I know by default, Wax, for example, always goes with IPFS. So when selecting which one you're going to go with, if you're going to launch a project, it is really up to you to do some research, balance the pros and cons, see which one works better for your workflow. But either way, I would just love to know, what are your thoughts on this? I gave a broad overview. Of course, I could have went all into the nitty gritty of all the tech and everything, but I tried to keep it pretty surface level, pretty basic, and really highlight the areas that I think is most beneficial to us as NFT collectors and people that want to use this stuff to build applications and businesses and what have you. So hopefully I didn't make that too confusing because I know it can get really technical, but I'd love to hear your feedback on that. Feel free to reach out to me using the contact information in the show notes. But as usual, I just want to thank you for taking time to listen to this as we're learning and building Web3 together. So until next time, later. The Nifty Business Show is not investment advice. It provides insights and information within the space. As with anything, please do your own research before making a decision whether you're making an investment or a purchase.